The other question we ask is, did you appeal? And this should be the first question for a PIAC rep when they get a complaint that says, you know, my claim's denied, is did you appeal? Because you're not going to be able to do anything about it if they didn't appeal first. And for, for any physician, if you feel your claim was improperly denied or downcoded, appeal. Um, if you don't appeal, and we're seeing this now, you know, it can result in not in losing an opportunity to get a, a health plan systems issue fixed in a timely manner. They just keep doing it because they're not hearing back from physicians. They're not getting um, negative feedback about that practice. It can reinforce a payer's belief that the practice is acceptable and not to pick on Humana, but Humana <laughs> pointed out, you know, that they had a low, they weren't impressed by the appeal rate on their practices. And somehow that made them feel a little more like, at least initially, the practice was acceptable. I'll say this by just watching. It also can deprive APMA of evidence that they can take to a payer to identify systematic practices and bring them to the payer's attention. So if the appeal rate at Humana had been 90%, APMA's discussion might have been different. Um, if APMA staff could have reached out and said, can you send us, you know, all your overturned appeals so we can get a sense of how many of these are being overturned. It gives them more bargaining power. So appealing is not only important on an individual level, it's important on an institutional level, both to, to stop the health plan practices and to give your association the information that it needs when there are practices that are problematic. So the first thing you need to do is understand the appeal process. And I say this with full understanding that I'm a lawyer and I know it's, it can be complicated. What I would suggest that you do is for your top payers or your top lines of business, um, those that you build the most or you have the most problems with, that you look it up, write it down, have it readily available so that it's very easy to do the appeal when you get a claim denied. And there are all sort of processes um, that are applicable depending on who the payer was. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the Affordable Care Act rules that apply to employer group and individual health plans. In Medicare, it's a different process, whether it's fee-for-service or Medicare Advantage, and it's even a different process under Medicare Advantage if you're contracting or non-contracting. There's a Medicaid process, and then there's a process for Medicare and Medicaid plans. Interestingly, most state laws do address member appeals, and they address appeals for non-contracting providers, and that's because non-contracting providers generally don't have a hold harmless obligation so they can bill members. So the state laws do address those, but very few prescribe a process for what happens if you're a contracting provider. Instead, we see that left up to negotiations between the plans and the providers. Um, and we see this also under federal law. For example, Medicare Advantage generally addresses only non-contracting providers only addresses non-contracting providers for post-service appeals. Um, there are a few rights for contracting providers for pre-authorization requests, but it's very limited. We also see, though, that denial notices, even if they don't regulate the health plan practices, they will regulate what's included in that denial notice, and frequently they'll have, the requirement will be that you have to give instructions on how to appeal. So to take advantage of the ERISA or the Affordable Care Act appeals process. And I've talked about this a lot, but, but it's worth, worth mentioning again. Um, this is a set in law appeals process that applies to claimants. And the ACA broadened this term to mean their authorized representative. And you can be their authorized representative. Um, it allows you to stand in the shoes of the beneficiary and use the statutory process rather than the health plan process. You have to be appointed as an authorized representative. And this is different than taking assignment. This is a different form. And I will say APMA has a model form to use this. And every member coming in your office 
should sign one of these to give you the right to either choose this process or the health plan process. Nice thing about this process is um, it's several steps, including independent external review. So when you get a denial, take a close look at it, make sure that you submitted your claim correctly, and if you did, appeal it. If you didn't, if you could see what the issue is, then ask for either a reopening or file a corrected claim. When you submit your appeal, this will sound self-evident, but, but I'm talking from experience. Send it to the appeals department. Don't send it to the president, no matter how mad you are. Don't send it to the president of the plan. Don't send it to legal counsel. They will not know what to do with it. It will sit on their desk until it gets rerouted. Or they'll send it to me and it will sit on my desk. Um, don't include a lot of legal accusations. For example, I received from one of my health plan clients a seven page letter. It was sent to the president, they looked at it, and it included a lot of legal accusations, so they sent it to me outside counsel. I started reading the first two pages and I realized it was, it just wasn't accurate at all. And I set it aside to get back to later. When I finally got around to reading the rest of it, on page seven I realized, oh, this is an appeal. So it finally went to the appeals department. Um, keep it simple, send it to the right department. If you have real concerns about legal compliance, that's separate, send that to the compliance officer or the compliance department, but keep your appeals straightforward, send them to where they're supposed to go according to the instructions. They'll know it's an appeal, they'll process it, with it, process it within the time frames. The appeals reviewers don't care about legal compliance. They're most frequently, the initial reviewer is gonna be an appeals nurse. So when you write your appeal, you are talking to a medical person. Um, what we see is, in most cases, they're gonna, if they're gonna deny it, they have to show it to a physician who will agree with the denial before it can actually be denied. So again, write it as if you're writing it to a nurse or a physician. Make sure that you include any relevant evidence. Um, Medicare Advantage appeals, particularly for out-of-network appeals, we find that if you send blinded fee-for-service um, explanation of benefits that show that the claim was paid the or the service was covered under fee-for-service, particularly if, the, if for contracting providers, if the service was covered, um, that's very helpful and very persuasive. Uh, or for any provider, if you can include EOBs just showing that that, or for any um, plan, you show EOBs showing that that plan has paid the exact same claim in the past, that can be helpful. Any overturns to show them that they have a pattern of making you appeal these and overturning them anytime can be helpful. And any relevant portions of the medical record, if they, if the uh, denial indicates it's not medically necessary, send the relevant portions of the medical record. Um, except in the final case where it's that individual's medical record, you'll want to be blinding anything that you send that has to do with other patients. And if you're denied, don't stop. Um, look and see if there are additional appeals processes. Under the Affordable Care Act, as I mentioned, and Medicare fees for service and Medicare Advantage for non-contracting providers and Medicaid, there are all additional levels. And some of these include review by an independent external entity. I can tell you that um, under Medicare Advantage, if the plan denies your, your request, they have to send it immediately to an external entity to review and it, it's just automatic. And if that independent external entity overturns it, it impacts the Medicare Advantage plan star ratings. Those overturns are one thing that impacts, and of course, star ratings impact their payment. So it's really important to appeal, and that, that's the out-of-network provider process. Um, I don't see, and I do a lot, I do some of these appeals. 
I never see physicians at the ALJ level. I'm only dealing with hospitals. We just don't see physicians get to that level. And you can do it. You don't need a lawyer. A lot of times, the person you'll be up against is going to be an appeals nurse. Um, the ALJs are, um, most of them, some of them are really cranky, but most of them are pretty understanding and just don't stand on formality and just want to hear your story and why you think your claims should be paid. And they tend to be pretty sympathetic towards healthcare providers. It's worth going that step. So 